Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Johnny here, taking a look at 17.5, factors that affect solubility. All right, so objectives, calculate the molar solubilities of salt in a solution containing a common ion. Analyze the effect of pH on the solubility of various compounds, and analyze how the formation of complex ions affects the solubility of various compounds. All right, the common ion effect. This should be kind of a review. Uh, the presence of a common ion will affect the solubility of a compound. For example, if I had calcium fluoride dissolving to give me calcium plus ions and fluoride ions, um, if I had a solution that already had Ca plus 2 in it or F minus in it from another compound, then the solubility of calcium fluoride will be less. So refer back to 17.1 for review if you need to. Okay. So calculations when the common ion is present. So it says calculate the molar solubility of calcium fluoride in a solution that is 0 0.02 molar of calcium nitrate. Well, it's saying that calcium plus 2 ion is common for both. So that is our common ion. Right? So if calcium fluoride breaks up into calcium plus 2 and fluoride ion, uh, we can ignore the CaF2 because it's a solid. We're going to make an ice box. I start with 0 0.02 calcium ion concentration from the problem and no fluoride ion. How much is it going to change? Well, I'm going to get plus X amount of calcium ion dissolving as well as plus 2X amount of fluoride ion because of the coefficient 2 in front. So our equilibrium concentrations are as follows, 0 0.02 plus X and 2X. So now we want to plug that into our KSP expression. Notice that the fluoride ion concentration has to get squared, right? So KSP for CaF2 is going to be the concentration of calcium ion times the concentration of fluoride ion squared because of this 2. And its concentration is going to be twice that of the change in the calcium because you get 2 for, as, for every calcium fluoride. Yeah. All right, assume that 0 0.20 plus x is going to still equal 0 0.02 because x is so tiny that it's not going to change it, and you'll check it later, which simplifies to being KSP equals 0 0.02 times 4x squared. I solve for x. I get 2.2 times 10 to the minus 5. And now I check if I did 0 0.02 plus 2.2 times 10 to the minus 5, what do I get? I still get... 0 0.02 when I round to sig figs and all that. So our assumption was good and safe to do. So we solved that. X, how much, what's the molar concentration of calcium fluoride in that solution? It's only going to be 2.2 times 10 to the minus 5. Where are my units? Molar. That's it. All right, solubility and pH. Slightly soluble salts that have basic anions increases as pH decreases with more H plus concentration. So let's take a look. This is because the H plus will react with the basic anion, which decreases its concentration. For example, if I had calcium fluoride, it's going to break up in Ca plus 2 and F minus. Now I know that F minus is the conjugate of a weak acid, which tells me that it is a basic ion, which means this is also going to occur. If I get fluoride ion, it's going to react with H plus and become HF. So the more H plus I have, the more acidic it is, the more HF I'm going to make, which is going to be the same thing as decreasing the amount of F minus that I got. Since F minus is getting used up to make HF, when more H plus is present, we can dissolve more CaF2. So basically what's happening is we're using up the F minus. So if I'm using up F minus, I need to replace it with Chatelier's principle, which means I'm going to be able to dissolve more of CaF2. All right, what is the molar solubility of magnesium hydroxide in a solution that is buffered to a pH of 11 that give me the KSP as 1.8 times 10 to minus 11? If we know the pH, we can calculate the OH minus, right? So the pH plus pOH equals 14. The pOH is 11. Uh, I'm sorry, pH is 11. The pOH has to be 3, which tells me the OH minus concentration is 10 to the minus 3. 
because it's a buffered solution, we know that the OH- isn't really going to change as we add more magnesium hydroxide. So we can plug it into our KSP expression. Again, it's a buffer, uh, and the pH is going to be constant, or relatively constant. So I know that the OH- isn't going to change. So magnesium plus 2 ion is what we're trying to solve for, because we want to know the molar solubility, and that's going to be our X. Right? So we know this number, we know this number, this is our unknown, solve for that. It's going to be the KSP divided by OH minus squared. Don't forget that squared, right? Because MgOH2 is breaking up into Mg plus 2 and 2 OH minuses. So that hydroxide's got to be squared. So then I plug and chug. KSP, plug it in, 10, point, or 10 to the minus 3 squared. And I get x equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And my concentration is going to be molar. So that's molar solubility of magnesium hydroxide and a pH of 11. Well, what if it was buffered to a pH of 9? Well, let's think about this. pH of 9 is going to be less basic, which means there's less OH- minus to start with. We should be able to dissolve more. Let's see. So again, we know the OH- minus concentration by looking at the pH and solving for OH. Uh, we get an OH- minus concentration of 10 to the minus 5. Same process, just different number. Because it's buffered solution, we know that OH- minus isn't really going to change, so we can plug it into our KSP expression as follows. Solve for it, plug and chug. So here I'm using 10 to the minus 5 because that is my OH- minus concentration at a pH of 9. And I solve, and I get 0.18 molar. So at a pH 11, it's 0 0.000. <laughs> 0, 0.18 molar and a pH of 9, it's 0.18. So there's a huge difference because of the effect of pH. So pH has a huge influence on its solubility. Things to watch for. Look for basic anions. Look for carbonates, phosphates, sulfide ion, cyanide ion. Those are all basic anions. Conjugates of weak acids. That's what you're looking for, all right? Now we got to talk about this thing called complex ions and their formation. So a complex ion is a metal ion with a Lewis basis bonded to it. All right, so let's say I had Ag+. Plus. I got this metal ion, and let's say I got ammonia, which is NH3-, minus, and they got those unshared electrons that it can donate. Well, what do I know about electrons? I know that they're negatively charged. And what do I know about how negative and positively charged things interact? They attract to each other. So what's going to happen is that metal ion is going to attract the unshared pair of electrons from the ammonia. This whole thing is a complex ion, and it will have a charge of plus one, right? Because the Ag plus has a plus one charge, NH3 is neutral. So this is our complex ion. All right, so this formation of a complex ion has its own K. Everything has its own K, huh? Kf. And the F is known as the formation constant. So if you hear formation constant, it's talking about KF. So for this example, KF is going to be like any other equilibrium, K. Um, concentration of the products, which is the complex ion, Ag, NH3, 2, because there's two NH3s. And it is going to be on top of Ag plus times NH3 squared, because you have two NH3s. Count them, one, two. So... Yeah. More of the same, just different. All right, so the bigger the KF, the more stable the complex ion is. Now, the way complex ions affect solubility is because if the interactions between the metal ion and the Lewis base are stronger than the interactions between water and the metal ion, then you'll be able to dissolve more salt um, that has the metal ion in it. So let's take a look. So if I got AgCl, right, and I'm going to dissolve it, into water, what's going to happen is the water is going to be attracted to the Ag plus ion and the chloride ion. The negative ends of the water are going to be attracted to the positive ion, and the positive ends of the water are going to be attracted to the negative ion. Now what happens is the water is moving around, it's attracted to this thing, and they're going to pull apart the ion. So that's just what's happening when things are dissolving. So you get something that looks like this. Now the complex, uh, I'm sorry, the formation of the complex ion is what I'm going to show next. So here I got the Ag+, plus, which is going to be aqueous, right? It's surrounded by water. Now let's say I added some NH3 to this solution. 
Boom. Then H3 is going to go, hey, you waters can get out of here. We got this. And because the Lewis base, the ammonia, interacts more strongly with the metal ion, it's going to kick off those waters. Now, those waters can go dissolve more of the AgCl. So it's important that the interaction of the NH3, or whatever Lewis base it is, uh, if it isn't stronger than water's attraction, then there will not be an increase in solubility. Uh, it's because it is more attracted to that metal ion that it kicks off the water, and the water can go dissolve more of the salt. So the Lewis base must be able to displace the water so that the water is freed up to do more dissolving. That's very important. If it never kicked off that water, then it's not going to do anything. can't dissolve more stuff. All right. So what's happening? So I got AgCl solid being dissolved to give me the ions. Now some of these ions are being attacked by a Lewis base, NH3, to form a complex ion. So what's happening is it's using up some of that ion, which means, hey, I'm using up some of this ion, which means I can shift this reaction to the right to replace it, which means I can dissolve more of the solid. Right? Water dissolves the salt. The Lewis base replaces water, forming a complex ion. This essentially removes the metal cation, which will drive the first reaction forward. All right, next topic is amphoterism. So there are compa compounds that can act as either an acid or base. So my example that I'm using right here is this ion. So it's got an H that it can kick off, which will mean it's acting as an acid. It also has unshared electrons that it can use as a base to make a bond with another proton. All right, so boom. It can be an acid or a base. We call those things amphoteric. All right, some compounds aren't very soluble in neutral solutions, but will be if it's acidic or basic. So here is an example. It's aluminum hydroxide. So we got AlOH3. Now an acidic solution is probably pretty obvious. Uh, when it dissolves, in acidic solutions, I'm jumping ahead, all right? So in acidic solutions, it's going to break apart, uh, and the OHs are going to break off to give you OH minuses, and if it's acidic, it's going to be neutralized by the H+, plus, and they're going to be gone. So that's going to be able to drive this reaction forward, right? So we can we got to replace the OH minuses that are being used up or neutralized by the acids. So yeah, more soluble. All right, back to what I skipped over. So... Things to look for that can be amphoteric are going to be these uh, ox or these cations as well as oxides and hydroxides. Those can be amphoteric. All right. Then I jumped ahead to this because I got so excited. I want to talk to you about this. Cool. Uh, in basic solutions, all right, what happens is this aluminum ion again gets surrounded by water, right? And we're making a complex ion. So metal ions create complex ions with water. It's surrounded by this water. These complex ions are acidic. We talked about this back in 16.11 when we talked about loose acids. So basically the positive cation is pulling electron density towards it, which is going to weaken the OH bond, kicking off the H+. Boom. It gets kicked off because it's pulling electron density towards that cation, which weakens this bond here. And that's what happened. All right, so in basic solutions, the hydrogens on the water can be neutralized by the OH- in the basic solution. All right, this may increase the solubility of the ions. So what happens? Oh, look at that, so fast. So basic solutions, some of these H's are going to get neutralized and disappear, and this whole ion may be more soluble uh, than it used to be. All right, so to summarize, presence of a common ion will decrease the solubility. pH may affect the solubility on some things. Basic salts will be more soluble in acidic or lower pHs. Formation of complex ions by Lewis bases may increase the solubility of certain compounds, and amphoteric compounds may be more soluble in solutions that are acidic or basic than they are in neutral pHs. I think that was everything. Yeah, so that happened. Hope you found that helpful. We'll see you in class. Okay, bye.